graduated, Victoria Soto, age 27, was a first grade teacher. As soon as she started hearing the gunshots and heard the announcement, she locked her door, she hurried her children into her closet, and stood in between them and the shooter. Adam Lanza broke through and shot her repeatedly. Luckily, the children were okay. Uh, however, she wasn't. She died. And uh, I firmly believe that had these teachers had something besides their bodies top of the fight, uh, a lot of these children could have been saved. Frankly, I think that list of well over 30 names could have been a lot shorter, maybe not even had a list. But unfortunately, since these teachers did not have anything to defend themselves or their students with, they were brutally murdered, and this man continued to stroll through Sandy Brooks campus, shooting anything he saw. Personally, I believe that Victoria Soto, had she had a weapon, could have just stood by her door, waiting for him to walk in, and blow his brains all over the wall as soon as he decided to come in, instead of him turning the corner and mowing her down with his assault rifle. Now, I understand that there are plenty of teachers who would disagree with me, and plenty of teachers who would not want to be armed, some just don't have the stomach for it. That's fine, they don't have to, but the teachers who do have the guts to stand up for their students should have the ability to. I also understand that there is an obvious concern of allowing these teachers to have weapons of this caliber. Uh, but we have to be able to trust the men and women who educate our children. If we are willing to trust them with our children's minds and their futures, we must trust them with their lives. And I personally, I'm very sad at the reality that this is becoming more and more necessary, but we can't escape the fact that it is. Current events are showing us that it is necessary to have someone besides a police officer guarding these schools. I mean, these are no longer safe havens for students. They've started becoming killing floors for these psychopaths who can just stroll onto these canvases with their rifles and handguns and body armor and just take whatever they want from these people. I ask you to be reasonable with the proposition at hand, and we must always be prepared to defend our children at home, at school, and at large. Are you in my time for questions? How much time remains? A minute 50. All right, are there any questions for the speaker? Uh, what type of weapon would be standard issue for a teacher? Likely a revolver. The thing is a revolver would not be a weapon that's suitable for any kind of lash out. A revolver almost always carries six rounds of ammo and it's always close range. That's the exact opposite of what a serial killer would use. Uh, in this case, yes, it has enough kick to drop anyone who comes in. And like I said, there's always going to be concern of them using this weapon on their children. It's not the weapon. It would not cause much damage. So in response, any sort of uh, revolver would do. Yeah. Are you saying that six dead children is an acceptable cost in response to the possibility of um, shooting down a shooter? I'm saying that it's extremely unlikely that this person would try to do anything. And if in this lovely reality you painted, they do decide to, it won't be the same as a mass AK-47 or something else. The chance of them pulling this crap is slim to none. And a revolver is ideally, in combat tactically, the best choice. Would you consider a taser? A taser is not going to stop someone who's got an insane adrenaline rush and Kevlar body armor and the intent of slaying children. It hardly stops drug addicts. In the back. So you're saying literally every single teacher in the entire United States should be offered the chance to have a gun? Uh, if they deem it necessary, yes. And what if they are insane? No follow up questions. <laughs> and actually, I don't answer that. If they're insane, they wouldn't be teaching.
a good point, and it won't pierce the armor. I understand that. But uh, studies show that if you're wearing Kevlar and you get shot with a uh, revolver round, almost any type, it's going to shatter your ribcage. It's going to make you start bleeding internally. It's going to make you shock. You're likely knocking down. And uh, I mean, if you keep shooting at you, it doesn't matter. It's going to pierce the armor. Speaking of something, the chair and I recognize. at the Sandy Hook shootings. There's something so much worse about that intrinsically than there are soldiers dying in the field. Because the kids are, I would say, a defenseless. But I'd like to give you another name. How about Gretchen Flanders? That was a girl I went to school with in fourth grade. She shot her brother in the rib cage with a revolver when she was cleaning it. When you have guns, accidents happen. But just so you know that I ain't loaded in one way or another. When I was born in 1975, my father bought me my birthright, which was a 30 6 rifle. I come from Michigan. I come from a culture of guns. I was a soldier for six years, and I've handled them and dealt with them my whole life. And I can say authoritatively, being a teacher for 13 years, having been a soldier, we should not have guns on this campus. I don't care who has them. The odds are that you're going to have more accidents if you have them around. So the whole idea of teachers who are qualified to show some subject, not necessarily to deal with firearms, it just is irresponsible. And anybody who suggests that we should have guns on campus probably has some kind of agenda that I would have you glean from their history. There's a whole movement of the NRA, which, uh, again, not even an organization that I'm opposed to. All they're trying to do is drum up a firewall, a storm against knee-jerk legislation. And in that sense, uh, a lot of the arguments that you're going to hear about teachers having guns whatnot stem from those NRA arguments, which realize how far outside of the normal political sphere those arguments come. You're dealing with reactionaries. You're dealing with a neo-fascistic organization. And in so dealing, you're listening to their arguments and you're actually debating them. I would not have you debate these arguments. When it comes to the role of government, it comes down to, yes, we have to educate our citizenry. We have to enlighten ourselves. And protection, well, let me ask you this. When are you safe? If you're not safe at school, you're not safe at home, you have to be armed everywhere you go. It sounds like a video game. It doesn't sound like life as we should be living it. And in that sense, we have deeper issues to resolve in our culture. We have over 4,000 violent crimes committed in a year. Comparatively, Italy has about 400. But hey, here's the thing. It's actually gotten better. Violent crimes have decreased in the last 10 years, despite what the Sandy Hook thing would affect us with. And that is why I kind of side with the NRA in one sense. We should not enact any legislation that is knee-jerk. The same kind of thing happened in 1980 when they tried to kill Reagan. Some nutcase tried to shoot up Reagan, whatever. Okay, we got a bunch of legislation that kind of actually gets in the way of gun control because of the Brady Bill. Laws that are passed right after some traumatic event oftentimes are the least useful laws. When do you make good decisions? When you're being reasonable. As he said, when you're being logical and rational. Not when you're feeling emotional. And I don't know about you, but I still think about the Sandy Hook shootings. When I walk into my class and I see a room full of 40 people who have maybe 80 years of life left in a beach, and I think that can be cut short so quickly, it bothers me. It disturbs me. So I got plans. If somebody's going to come in my room, they're going to meet quite a storm of resistance, we'll say. 
Um, but I don't have to go for that. All you've got to do is have a place to lock the door, a place to hide, and then a stick or two. <laughs> is that going to help you against the guy with an assault rifle? Lock door, sure it will. That's my first line of defense. And you know what? If I was to feel that that was not enough, I wouldn't work here. I'd rather go to Iraq. At least I know what side the bullets are coming from. But I don't feel like that. I don't think our society is something we have to give up on to the point where teachers have to carry handguns. If you're going to carry a gun, my God, carry a rifle. You can do much more damage with that, right? Why would you carry a revolver? They're so much harder to hit anything with. So I guess that brings back to the real point. Why would you want to hit anything? You're in a school. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm part of gun culture, whether I like it or not, so are you. But let's wait a little bit. Wait for more people to die, maybe not. Let's wait until we're clear-headed as a society to make that decision. Let's put it on. Sure works with the dead suit.